Jesus. Hello? Hey, Paul? Kathleen? Anyone here? Hello? The most exciting day of the entire year for us growing up was um, the 4th of July. It was so exciting because it was a day that was just full. It was full of the best stuff in the whole world. We always started off early in the morning with our decorated bikes as we went up Newberry Boulevard to Lake Park and waited for the bike competition. I won best decorated bike for a couple years in a row and I'll never forget the day that I was given the award by Carl Zimmerman and Albert the alley cat. Oh my God, I loved them. We uh, always had to run home um, after we, on our bikes uh, after we were at Lake Park because um, the next thing we had to do was get back, at, back, back into a Rambler station wagon and make our way downtown because the circus parade was about to start. And we were never smart enough as a family to bring our lawn chairs down three days early. Can you imagine being a visitor from out of town and walking downtown three days before the 4th of July thinking, what is going on here? But that's the kind of city that I was raised in. You could leave your lawn chair there on water in Wisconsin and show up when the parade started and be like, excuse me, that's my chair, boom, and sit down. That's a good city to grow up in. We made our way and we found a way to watch the parade and that parade, that circus parade that went through our streets of Milwaukee was a kid's dream. And my favorite part, I would wait and be like, oh, look at that, look at that, that's a lion. That's a real lion going, to... oh, here come the clowns. Oh my God, I hate the clowns. Those clowns scare me. Here they go, here comes my favorite. Here they come, look at those horses. Oh, come on horse, please, poop. That's all we wanted. We wanted the horse to poop close to us. And I wanted the horse to poop close to me because you know what would happen? Mr. Doolin, who lived two doors down, who was what was called a garbage man, would come with a broom and a big bucket. And we'd see Mr. Doolin, we'd say, Mr. Doolin! Mr. Doolin! He never heard us because he never looked our way as he shoveled that poop into the bucket. And days later, you'd say to Mr. Doolin, Mr. Doolin, how much poop did you, did you pick up during that parade? And he'd say, go home. He didn't really want to talk about it, Mr. Doolin. After the circus parade, we'd, we, we would go back home and pack up that Rambler station wagon because we had to make our way out to land and to the Lannan Quarry. That's where we went on the 4th of July for the bricklayers, the Union Bricklayers 4th of July picnic. It was Lannan, which as a kid, it was so far. When I grew up and realized it was near Menominee Falls, I was like, you've got to be kidding. It's not that far. We would go, and there at the land and bricklayer's picnic, we could do something more of something we could do there than we could ever, ever do at home, and that was eat. We could eat as much as we wanted. They had a huge, huge corn roast, and you would step in line, and you'd walk down the corn roast, and they would hand you a roasted corn wrapped in a big, thick napkin and you would make it to the end and dip it in that big pool, that vat of Wisconsin butter. And it was just like, I kind of want to jump in that butter is what I want to do and cover it with salt. And I always ate probably like 20 years there at the bricklayer's picnic. And if you were kind of sick of eating the corn, you'd go to the other end of the park because there at the end of the park were the bricklayer park ladies giving away little ice cream cups, chocolate and vanilla with that wooden spoon, which I don't know about you, but a wooden spoon in my mouth, it was always like, ah, I hated that. So I would just take the cup and And if you were sick of the ice cream cup, you'd go to the next table because they were giving away ice cream sandwiches, vanilla or chocolate. What would I like? 
I'd like a vanilla this time. Ten vanilla. Ten chocolate. And 20 years of corn. By the time I got home, I could poop like a horse. <laughs> we would come home just in time to get to Lake Park, where we would spread out our blankets and claim that area. Six kids and my mom and dad, so we could watch the sky explode into fireworks. It was so great. And we would then walk home down Kenwood Boulevard to Bartlett and Kenwood, 3131 North Bartlett. And it was late enough that we should have gone to bed, but we never did. My dad would put us on the port steps and he would disappear into the basement. And he would come back with what he called snakes. He would light those snakes there on the concrete walkway and we would watch this little piece of charcoal turn into a snake. He would disappear again. He would come from the basement with sparklers. Sparklers. He would light them and we would write our name into the dark night, late, sitting on the porch on the best day of our summer, the 4th of July, and when we finally got to bed, it took so long to get to sleep because we always just hoped and we, we dreamed and pray that the next 4th of July would be exactly like this one. We all grew up. A lot of us moved away. But it was a few 4th of Julys in, when my mom was in her two-bedroom, two-bathroom condo in Grafton, that all of us were home. And that first year that all of us were home, my brother Jimmy, who lived with his wife, Catherine in Atlanta, and his daughter, who lived in St. Paul, were in Milwaukee for the 4th of July. My brother Timmy and his wife Patty and their two girls, Maggie and Kylie, were home from Tampa, Florida for the 4th of July. I was in town. I live in a condo in downtown Milwaukee with my partner Steve. We were around my sister Colleen and her husband Ed and her two girls, Lindsay and Sarah. They were in Cedarburg and my sister Maureen and her partner Sandy and her kids, Connor, Callahan and Maggie were all, Madeline were all home. They were, they were home. And I certainly can't forget my brother Mike and his wife Terry and their two kids um, who are my favorite. Katie and Matthew. It was the first time in my mom's entire life that she ever lived with two bathrooms. And she lived alone. And for years, my mom would say to anybody, oh yeah, oh sure. I have two bathrooms. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even know which one to go to. We're like, mom, you're in your 70s. Go to the closest, okay? Outside of my mom's bedroom, she had what she uh, called her patio. Mm. We, um... <laughs> We called it her slab because it was a piece of concrete about the size of a dining room table. She called it her patio. One of those summers when all of the kids and grandkids were home, my mom said, I'm going to have a 4th of July picnic on the patio. Oh. I said to my mom, are you going to have it in shifts? And she said, oh, don't be silly. I'm going to have a small table on the patio. Then I'm going to get a big picnic table in the grassy knoll. I said, the grassy knoll? Mom, don't call it that. People of my generation are afraid of grassy knolls. Yeah. So my mom said, okay, this is what's going to happen. The boys are going to bring the meat and cook the meat, the girls. Colleen and Maureen are going to bring the side dishes, and I'm going to make a surprise. Well, just so you know, we were raised by an Irish Catholic woman who boiled everything. So when she said she was going to make a surprise, I thought, what do you boil to bring to a picnic? Eh? We all came to my mom's, and my brothers and I cooked the meat, and we were enjoying that out on the patio, 4th of July, at my mom's two-bedroom, two-bathroom condo in Grafton, Wisconsin, and I was sitting that small table on her slab, my mom and I and the youngest member of my family, Maddie Myers, my sister's youngest kid who was five years old at the time. 
And I turned to my mom in the middle of this meal, and I said to my mom, oh my Lord, mom, this food, the food is so good. How did it turn out that my sisters, Colleen, Mary, Margaret, and Maureen, Mary, Margaret, turned out to be such great cooks? And my mom looked at me and she said, I'll tell you why they're great cooks. You know why? It's because they turn Lutheran. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that means. All I know is that my sister Colleen Mary Margaret brought this potato salad that had no like sour cream. It had vinegar and bacon. And I said, what is this? And she said, Lutheran potato salad. And I thought, oh. I wish I was Lutheran. My sister Maureen brought this coleslaw that was so fresh and crisp and it didn't have a coleslaw sort of no, like, it was like vinegar. It was just so, it was like I said, let me guess. And she said, Lutheran coleslaw. I thought, oh, you Lutherans, you know what you're doing. We finished the meal and my mom said, okay. Okay, everyone, it's time for the surprise. And my sister Colleen said, Mom, what's the surprise? And my mom said, I made a key lime pie. And I saw my Lutheran sister do this. <laughs> because old habits die hard. And she said, Johnny, come on, come help me get the pie. So we went into my mom's kitchen and she opened up the refrigerator and she said, get the pie. I looked and I said, Mom, where, where is the pie? It's on the bottom shelf. Just get the pie. So there on the bottom shelf was a huge Pyrex dish. And I took it out and I thought, oh my Lord, a square pie. So far, not so good. And I said, are you sure this is a pie? Because it looked like scalped potatoes. And she said, why don't you just shut up? That's the pie. So my mother cut that pie, that square pie, into square pieces. And she served it to her six kids and their husbands and their wives and to her 10 grandkids. And we took our first bite of my mother's surprise out on the patio, 4th of July, key lime pie. And I said, Mom, what is that in your key lime pie? And she said, that's a grape. <laughs> Mom, why is there a grape in your key lime pie? And she said, because they were on sale. Sitting at the table, as I said, was my five-year-old niece, Madeline, who had just taken her first bite of my mother's key lime pie. And this is what Madeline was doing. And I thought, oh my Lord. So I took another bite. And I said to my mom, oh my God, mom, mom, this pie. This pie, it tastes sour, mom. And my mom said, oh yeah, key lime. I said, no, mom, not that kind of sour. This pie, it tastes, it, oh, mom, it tastes bad. It tastes, it tastes old, mom. Oh my Lord, mom, this pie, it tastes rancid. And I swear to God, this is what my mom said. Shh. I said, Shh. like we're not going to tell anybody? I said, Mom, Madeline is retching. My mom said, oh my God, I didn't have enough cream cheese. So I just put some sour cream in there. I said, Mom, this isn't a pie. This is a big square dish full of ingredients. And when put together, equal... Crap! And my mom looked at me and she said, I suppose you're going to talk about this on the radio. And I did. <laughs>